we begin on Thursday night. It's a big divisional battle in Atlanta between the Falcons and the Buccaneers. And much like yesterday, well, I guess depending on when you bet the game yesterday, Falcons two and a half against Tampa, total is 43 and a half. I took Tampa. I'm just so disappointed on Atlanta, which this is the NFL. Atlanta could be 4-0 or 0-4, oh, and oh. but 2-2. Two and two. So they get, they get a gift, two gift touchdowns, and still have to get coup from 58 to win it. Mm-hmm. Pitts, no, no catches. None. And then Morris with the stats are for losers line, which he also used in a stint at Tampa, which didn't go well either. So I don't like, I don't like what's going on in Atlanta. And uh, what a win by Tampa to toy with Philadelphia and a great job by Baker. But it's just, I hope at some point they can figure this out. But Atlanta needs to be a better team with the product and what they're doing offensively. And there hasn't been much to speak of. They got a miracle win at Philly and Koo bailed them out yesterday. In it. But in the Saints gave them two touchdowns. Yeah. So we are absolutely on the same page with this game. My only thought is to bet Tampa plus a two and a half, probably on the money line as well. Uh, look, I know that Saints game was wacky. Uh, because without that final drive, maybe they do win it 23-17. That's the final score. They cover. They get, you know, and we're talking about maybe a different, but I, I don't really think that's going to be the case, again, because the defense, that's the reason why they won the game on some fluky plays yesterday. And there's something wrong with Cousins. I don't think he's fully healthy at this point. Yeah. The offense, and by the way, what are you doing late in the game? Final drive, taking all those shots down the field. Yep. I know that he won it with a 58 yarder. You don't, you don't want to maybe get some 10, 12 yard throws in there you want to go for the end zone and try to score a touchdown what is happening uh so to me it would be only the buccaneers then sunday early game in london 9 30 a.m eastern time 6 30 out here on the west coast how this game has flipped jets vikings summertime jets were laying three and a half six point move since the summertime vikings now two and a half point favorites i took the vikings and if I'm wrong, so be it. And I know as how the NFL season's going. The Jets will probably win this game. It's a coaching mismatch. My biggest concern about the Jets going into the season, the coaching staff. And they have uh, failed miserably. You know, you can't get the ball to Wilson. The offensive line issues, the stupid penalties. And again, Hackett has no business in this league being an offensive coordinator. There are no adjustments. You can't get the ball to your top playmaker. And now you're going against Flores. Good luck. And then it's, you know, Darnold can try to stick it to him too. But It's such a bad look to lose that game like they did, all things considered. Now, the Broncos' defense is evidently going to be pretty good this year, despite, you know, some serious injury, uh, injuries already. Uh, Alex Singleton, linebacker, is out for the year. That We knew that, obviously, going back to week three. So the, I think that that's a pretty legit unit. Bo Nix, again, 12-25 for 60 yards passing. They won the game outright. How do you allow that to happen at your house where they come in there, your defense is very good, and you can't capitalize and come out with that win. And oh, by the way, this is the part of the schedule that we all looked at with the Jets and said, oh, they're going to get out of the shoots with a, in a hot start. I bet them last undefeated team because I thought they had a great path had they knocked off the, the 49ers in San Francisco to begin the season. I, I was banking on these wins. Yesterday was one of them. This game in London was one of them. That's no longer the case. Mm-hmm. And I, I love what you said. This has to be one of the biggest coaching mismatches on paper of the entire year. It's not close. It's a, this is another 16 versus a 1. After what happened in Denver? I mean, to hire Hackett because he's Rodgers' buddy? They're, they're broken offensively. Oh, yeah. And it, it shouldn't be the case. Yep. Browns at the Commanders. <laughs> Washington, now favored by 3.5. The look-ahead total was 41.5, up to 44. So I was on with our, our guys in Cleveland today. And they were all, you know, great turnout. The fans were fired up and also distraught. And uh, their adjusted win total is now five and a half. They, they're hinting that a, a, a change could be coming with who's calling the plays. But, uh, again, you, you take the 10 nothing lead and you don't score the rest of the game, and then they can't catch the ball, they can't block, they can't run the ball. The offensive line with all the issues and Watson taking the sack, they don't have – the Raiders don't have Adams and Crosby. You lose the game. You only allow. A t- oh God! You get the defensive touchdown. It's and now you're going against the hottest team in football right yep. now with this offense. I can't. I don't want any part of Cleveland here. Yeah, and as we're talking about this, you can tell that it's a very difficult week with Survivor. I, these point spreads. I mean, maybe that's actually easier because all of these six and a half point dogs or more have been winning outright anyway. 
for the most part. Je- uh, Broncos, ha- you know, did it again yesterday. Um, but it's a vi- like, do you trust the Commanders enough to take him in Survivor? Do you like him that much? No one can slow down this offense right now. You like what, the- what's Watson going to do? I mean, I, I also you just can't keep playing this card about the rust. I mean, he's, he can't keep doing this. It's no, been, he's, he's a bad quarterback. Yeah, it's been two point. years. You can't say he's rusty. Yeah, period. You can't do that anymore. Yep. So another example here. You okay with the Bears and Survivor at home against Carolina? No. They're lane four. Total is 42. They won that game. I thought the Rams had plenty of opportunities early in that game to get a pretty decent lead. They did. Never happened. And so I just... I, Williams didn't do much in the game. He got better. Missed some easy throws. Yeah, he did. I told you this would happen too, by the way. Uh, Taylor won in the game. Their punter. And everyone wants to mock and ridicule for taking him in the fourth round. He saved their ass. He had he averaged 55 yards a punt. They were backed up, and he had a 64-yard punt and pinned the Rams, which led to points. He pinned them three times. Yeah. Williams got better, still missed some easy throws. Zero confidence in this coaching staff. Imagine if they had gone Kingsbury, and it's a double bad beat with Brady saying, I almost went to Chicago. With they, they were aggressive pursuing me in free agency. They make it worse. But still, you got the running game. Swift was good. That's the one plus. Can't trust them here. Can't trust them. The Rams should have won that game. You mentioned the opportunities they had. Yeah, I also, I mean, being as realistic as possible on the Bears, pretty good defense yes. overall. Yes. Not, a, not a bad unit. But you're exactly right. This is not the coaching staff to fix the offense at this point. Maybe they get right for one week anyway against this Carolina defense that uh, appears to be bottom of the barrel this year. The Bengals did whatever they wanted yesterday for the most part. Uh, that goes back to a high-scoring game against yes. the Raiders out here. So maybe 42 is actually not enough because Dalton and, and company, they did score plenty of points. And he put up decent numbers again yesterday. Give me Johnson props. Oh, another big game. I know. Colts at Jacksonville. <laughs> the Jags, two and a half. Total is 46. Is it going to be Flacco? How about it? That's another thing. Browns lose again. Guess what? Oh. Flacco, two touchdowns, and the reason they won the game. <laughs> what if he's the reason why the Colts make the playoffs this year? Yeah. Because I got to tell you, even if they go, it happened twice yesterday, Paulie. Richardson, out of the game, comes back like, that's kind of who he is already. He is very susceptible to getting nicked up uh, to the point of where he has to leave, go to the tent. Is it a concussion? What's wrong with the guy? Uh, who's to say if you start him here, he's going to last more than a drive? Now, while he was in there yesterday against that Steelers defense... Pretty good. But you always have that in the back of your head, like, when's the injury coming to this guy? I know. Well, it's been a house of horrors, though. They haven't won there since 2014, I believe. I took Jacksonville, and uh, I know Doug Peterson has lost 8 of 9. And the win, I guess we can't count. It was against Bryce Young. But, again, Lawrence has regressed, missed some easy throws, and I thought I was going to lose my Jacksonville ticket. I thought the lateral touchdown was coming there on the last play, but... Uh, I took Jacksonville, but again, how, what's Khan going to think if they lose this game? And well, they, I, I would they, think that Doug Peterson's coaching for his job every Sunday from here on out. Yeah. Yeah. Handed a touchdown early. Still didn't matter. Still uh-huh. lost the game. 0-4. You this go to good, 0-5, that's got to be it as far as I'm concerned. It's a really good game on Sunday. Bills, a one-point favorite, total 46.5 at the Texans. After the Bills got absolutely manhandled last night. Against Baltimore. Are you concerned about the Texans? It doesn't. I it am. doesn't look right. I am concerned. Right? Yeah. I am. It's not the, the offense needs to be better. I know you have people out in the running back situation, but yep. By the way, it's since flipped. Uh, the Texans are now favored in the game. Yeah, great game. No opinion. But, oh, I know this. Bills finally played a good team last night. And the street came to an end. Oh yeah, I've forty-five not, uh, in a row covering yeah, teasers. And that's right. Getting routed. That's a good point. I know that was over early, and they got punched in the mouth, and they didn't respond. But I'm also super high on the Ravens. I think they're one of the best teams in football. Yeah. And they were awesome again last night offensively. And the Ravens are now lane three uh, at Cincinnati. Two and a half. So, uh, now two and a half. And the total is high at 49. I don't know how the, the game didn't go over last night. I have no idea how oh, that yeah. game didn't go over. But I would look at this one's now taking money over 51 as well. So the market totally agrees here. Yeah. The Bengals have some serious problems on defense. Oh, yeah, they do. They did get bailed out. I give them credit. But the goal line stand was important oh, in, yeah. in the first quarter. But uh, NHL season almost here. Get our betting, betting guide. It's out now. Team previews, predictions, best bets, nine ninety nine. Get your copy of the guide and instant access to best bets, top-rated betting systems from Mackinnon, the 24-7 video access. Got to have it. 
Avid hockey bettors are those new to the sport with key insights and plenty of data. $9.99 your first month. VEASAN.com slash subscribe. VEASAN.com slash subscribe. Hockey's here. The Dolphins playing, of course, tonight in Monday Night Football. They play at New England next week. Miami a one-point favorite in the game, 36-and-a-half with the total. Well, it's in my ugly coming up. New England 52 points in four games. And again, school's out. So uh, everyone knows everything's five yards. It's every dink and dunk and Brissett won't throw it down the field. Warner had the pick six right off the bat. Uh, offensive line horrendous. No playmakers. I can't believe what they did against Seattle, now that I think about it, what happened in week two. So I want to see what Huntley does tonight. I have confidence in him, and I think I'll be on the Dolphins in this spot because I think he'll look good tonight. Well, I will say, if he does look good... It'll move, no doubt. I think his number goes to three. Yeah. Miami. Like, if it's efficient tonight, he gets the receivers uh, some action. It looks good. Which I think he can, right? I, this number will not be along, uh, be around following the game tonight. Issues moving in garbage time. Yep. This is no, there's just no talent. The New England's terrible offensively. Uh, Nick Bogdanovich, when he was in studio with us here earlier this hour, when he left, he said, "Why are they not starting Drake May?" I think it's because of the offensive line. But some people are all weird to, to the point where it's like, put him in. What's let's see sure. what he has. Let's yeah, give, go. Give it a shot. Right. Okay, uh, Cardinals are playing at the 49ers. San Francisco opened a seven and a half point favorite. That's where we're sitting right now. And the total in this game is 49. I don't know what has happened to the Cardinals offense the last two games yep. in the second half. I was just going to say that. Totally disappeared. Right. What's going on with Gannon? You can't stop anything. I know the defense was supposed to be bad, but that's your area of expertise. Again, like Salah. Come on, you're a defensive guy. Stop the run, Arizona, stop anything. And then why Why the disappearing act with Harrison? I mean, he should be a big part of your offense too. So how bad it's looked offensively, you know, in uh, week one was kind of a fluke as well because they had the kickoff return, yeah. ran the ball well on Buffalo, but Murray didn't do much in the passing attack in that game. So he, they so, ran the ball well again yesterday. Connor had a good game. But when you look at the overall passing yards, Paulie, in a game that turned out to be a complete blowout, Murray couldn't even come close to touching 200 yards passing. And I'm watching the game thinking to myself, what is happening here? He's good, I think, right? The weapons are there. I know that there was no McBride. I don't care. They still have good weapons overall on offense. And it just, it never, it never worked, never got going. Uh, the Raiders are at the Broncos. Denver, I think rightfully so here, a favorite, two and a half points. Total is 37. Too high? Uh, this one's tough. Denver, you're right. Very good defense. But was that a fluke with the Raiders? That's another indictment of Cleveland, too. Worst rushing attack in the league, and then the Raiders ran for 150 on them. Like, is, there's, it, there, there, is, there's is there no, a chance? There, sorry, there's no Adams. You, what do you think they're going to do? I mean, that's a horrible job by Cleveland and their defense. But right. I, I'm concerned about because you saw the letdown after they beat uh, the Ravens. So... Now I don't I don't expect Adams anytime soon, and that's just I could only take Denver here. Although the Raiders have owned them. Here's my question to you: Is there yeah. a chance the Browns' defense last year was a complete fluke? Yes. Well, we know what happened in road games. They were the worst defense in the league in road games. Right, Nine they, and zero to the over. Sure, and they happened to play. There was a long string of like backup quarterbacks they played last year that, that probably too. resulted in them having good home performances. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, you might you might have something there with the total. That could be. All right, Packers are playing on the road in Los Angeles against the Rams. Green Bay, a a three-and-a-half-point favorite. Total is uh, high 40s here. Number one, do we have a new kicker? Has that been announced? Is this going to be a thing again this year? He missed two. He's got to go. You need a new kicker. The kid missed two again. So, and then they, guess what, decided the game and and the comeback. But I think it's it's all Green Bay here. Packer Nation will take over, be cheeseheads everywhere. You're not going to have Cup again. McVay announced that. McVay's done an excellent job, but it's just too much over to overcome with the injuries, and I don't think they can stop Love and the weapons that he has. How dangerous of a play is Green Bay here on the road in Survivor? Well, considering how tough the schedule is, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. it. also depends on what you have left, but it's a tough week. Rams are kind of a – we use this word a lot today to describe teams. They're kind of broken right now, too. Yeah, and the, the, the Niner the thing never should have happened. It was a miracle. Uh, yes. It was a total choke job by the Niners. I would totally agree with that. Uh, the I do have questions about the okay so here are my maybe a lot of them special teams again this year with Green Bay it never ends the kick everybody's got a good kicker but them evidently uh, the defense I'm sorry now they played two yep. good offenses this year you're right 
Philadelphia went healthy. I mean, they just cooked them. And what we saw with Sam Darnold and the Vikings did yesterday. And now the, the thing that got me was the news about Jair Alexander not long before kickoff. Just misses the game. Mm-hmm. Nope, sorry, can't be out there. That's a huge loss with, you know, with Justin Jefferson on the opposite side. So they were down two guys in the secondary. Well, if you lose this game, then you're really you're, you're in trouble, though. I mean, you lose to a bad Rams team with I know. all these injuries. and Because guess that was my big concern about Green Bay. That is a backloaded, brutal schedule. Yeah, yeah. Yep. The Giants are playing in Seattle against the Seahawks. And uh, Seattle, of course, playing tonight. They're a six-point favorite at home. Total is 41 and a half. And now this, for, for people who have Seattle remaining in Survivor, again, they were used, I think, probably a lot uh, the first two weeks. But if not, this is one of the biggest point spreads on the entire board this week. I like it over. I think there'll be points in this one. Yeah, I think uh, neighbors and yeah. Yeah. you know company can actually, and Danny Dimes has been okay this year, so I think they can move the ball here. It's a, I, I really want to see what's going to happen tonight against Detroit with Seattle. Right. Because so we both think they're frauds. And it'll be a good test. And by the way, the league did a great job. Six early, four late. That, yep. You got the London game. Yep. The Sunday night game is Dallas at Pittsburgh. The look ahead, the Cowboys were a small favorite, like one. Now they're two and a half, and the total is 42 and a half. Problem for me yesterday with Pittsburgh was more on defense right away to begin the game. Fields turned out to have a really good game yesterday. So Steeler Nation is unhappy and with the, with the officials, and a lot of calls went against them. I know there was a, a vocal, a lot of players and ex-players on X and what happened, and Fitzpatrick said it, he can't hit people hard, but fields look good. I mean, throwing the ball, I mean, still it's infuriating to know that a lot of times third and short, he doesn't want anything to do with the pass. He's going to take off and run, and people can't stop it. But fields had a good job, bad job defensively, calls one against him. But Pickens, I mean, I don't know how that happened near the goal line. Yep. That should have been a, that drive should have resulted in points, probably a touchdown. It didn't. You lose the ball, you give it right back. Um, I don't know. Uh, aren't the Cowboys banged up after the game on Thursday yeah. night defensively? Yeah. Okay, well, that defense has been terrible this year. The Colts' defense equally is bad, if not worse. And look at what Justin Fields just did yesterday. Tough game. I, I'm surprised the Cowboys are favored. Okay. I, I like Pittsburgh no, yesterday. They, I got burned. Steelers are two, aren't they? No, Cowboys are Did it flip? No, so I thought the Steelers are favored. Hold on. Well, I got the screen right in front of me. Really? I wrote down earlier today the numbers that were on the board. Yeah. No, Steelers are now favored. Yeah, you're right. I saw Cowboys two and a half. All right. Tough game. Just like the Monday night game. I mean, how much? You're right. Kansas City has to make a trade. But they're going to have How many to. guys? Rice likely done for the year. Don't have Brown. You finally got Kelsey involved. You don't have Pacheco. You bring in Steele, alligator boy, fumbles twice. Mm-hmm. I mean, what? It's. It, but your defense is nasty, and then it's Carr on the road. So we know what to do there. But the Saints look good at times. Just gave the game away. You handed uh, Atlanta 14 points, as we just talked about. So, oh. but, but again, it's just this pulling a rabbit out of their hat every single week. Ten wins in a row. Combined 60 points. How do they win every close game? Yeah, so the look ahead, it was KC 6.5. If you go back to the summertime, the Chiefs were favored by 8. But... I mean, when you have cluster injuries at a certain position, that doesn't help. Factored in with the Chiefs, I know, I get it with the record, but they have been far from impressive so far this year. Mahomes is not lighting the world on fire. The fact nope. that he's the MVP favorite is a joke, but they don't want to get any li- you know, built-up liability on him to win that award. I don't know. Again, I'll, I'll go back to the same, same thing here. It's a very difficult survivor week. KC here at Circa, you ha- maybe have to save for Thanksgiving or Christmas, in theory. However, oh. 110 were lopped off yesterday with the Jets going down and even more than that. So we're down to, what, 480 or something, something like that? Yeah. Well, I could see them. You could save them. Also, I don't have a problem with if you use them and just see if there's carnage and chaos. Uh, yeah. Because it's such a tough week. And then sit back, relax. I got my homes. And then maybe we're down to 200 or something. Maybe. One fifth. I don't that's, know. That's, I think some of the, sure. I, I'm, not, I'm not exaggerating. My partner and I went back and forth for, I think, almost six hours on Saturday texting about this. Uh, what we're going to do this weekend. Week four. That's, that's what it's turned into. You changed your mind at the last second? We were at 3.05 Pacific time. Deadline's 4 o'clock. 3.05, we were in agreement on Miami. But we let it breathe. We talked it out even more. Yep. And I uh, decided Good. not to go with them. I was surprised. Only two, 
270 on uh, San Francisco. Thanks for watching, but don't let the betting insights end here. If you want an extra edge this football season, you can get a month of VEASAN Pro right now absolutely free. That means access to our betting insights, analysis, and tools like our betting splits at zero cost to you. Click the link in the description to sign up.